Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today for Sketchbook Sunday, we're actually gonna do something a little different. I felt like painting with oils. I haven't done that in a while, and um, I wanted to do something different. I'm using the Berlin Water Mixable Oils to make cleanup a lot easier, and this video is brought to you by jerrysartorama.com. You can find the Berlin Water Mixable Oils there. They're very affordable, and all the paints I'm using came from one of their uh, multi-packs, so I'll link that up below too, so if you're curious about oils, you want to try something where you don't have to use paint thinner or mineral spirits or turpentine to clean them up, they're a really nice option. I feel like water mixable oils have come a long way over the years and they used to feel kind of thin and streaky but now they are rich and buttery and um, I really don't notice a big difference using these and the uh, the traditional oils, except for maybe the smell. <laughs> and I do like the smell of oil paint so that's kind of a bummer but where I paint in the winter is off my kitchen and in the office. And the family office and everybody else uses it so I don't like to you know stink up the place with regular oils. I'm using a round brush well I was using a round brush with thin down paint with some water to sketch in my vase and little kind of looks like a wood slice tabletop and now I'm using a large filbert brush to fill in the background. I'm using um, burnt umber I believe or burnt sienna I think it's burnt umber some yellow ochre some ultramarine blue and some white to get these earthy tones and I'm just basically blocking in color. I of course want to block in some of the color into the vase as well because when you have a vase of water you're getting all of these colors from the background that are reflected in so I want to make sure that I've got all that in from the get-go. Because oil paints can be opaque by adding white I don't have to worry about um, uh, about filling in something and then not being able to paint over it because I could totally paint over everything. I just don't want to have a big greasy mess basically. So I did like dip my brush in a little bit of water just to help the paints glide a little bit, but not so much that um, that it like made it transparent and streaky. Uh, and then I just kept working on the background until I had it blended out to my liking. This whole painting took me about an hour to paint, just a little under an hour, and it was so enjoyable. I haven't used oils in a few months, so for me it just made all the difference. Now I'm adjusting my easel so it's a little bit uh, more upright. When you're pushing like the paint into the back uh, background like that, it does uh, kind of push your easel down. This is just an inexpensive little table easel. Um, the reason I wanted to use this is because I didn't want to get the paint on my table and then, because you know, I'm messy and then I forget that I use oils and then like they'll still be wet a couple days later and I'll get it on my next project and I just wanted to avoid that and also oils can glare a lot with my overhead lights so having it at like a 30 or 45 degree angle with this little table easel makes it a lot easier and less fatiguing on my eyes. For the tabletop, which is like a wood slice, it looks like a live edge wood slice here in my reference photo. By the way, I've painted this before in watercolors and pastels, so I'll try to remember to link those up in the video description in case you're curious. And those are real-time tutorials, uh, a real-time tutorial, I use both of those medias. Um, so when I'm applying the paint here, it's yellow ochre, burnt umber, and white, I'm kind of going in a tree ring pattern as I apply it, just so I kind of get that... Um, uh, that gesture in the table and I used a smaller brush and some of the burnt umber and a little ultramarine just to put a little bit of that bark in on the edge and there you can see I'm just very loosely putting in some rings in the uh, the tabletop there. I just want to suggest at it this isn't going to be a really uh, detailed realistic piece this is definitely going to be an all a la prima all in one go type of painting. I also put some of that color in the bottom of the jar just to show that that's reflected in the jar as well and I took some of the jar color that kind of lighter blue and just kind of dabbled it onto the tabletop so you could see where the light was going through the jar and casting a little bit of a highlight onto the table so when you've got light um, so the light source is on the right side right side above um, so it's going through the jar so it will cast a little shadow there from like the opaque items like the stems um, in the jar but it's also going to like magnify go through the lights gonna go through the water and it's gonna cast some of the um, the light through the jar as well so you'll get some yellows and some blues and whatnot so you want to pay attention to those things as you go 
I'm not sure if my waterline is a little funky or if it's just the angle that I'm filming at because I have my work on an easel, but that waterline does look a little off. We'll have to, I, I did the, the final picture didn't look off, so I can't remember if I adjusted that or if it was just the angle that I was, that I was painting from. But I love these thick, oily passages of color, um, and that's really what I was going for. There was an artist that painted in oils, and I can't remember her name, but she did a painting every day, and then she um, wrote a book about it, and I was so intrigued by that, just to do a tiny, like, a six by six painting every day in oils. I thought that would be so cool. And then I thought, oh my gosh, what do you do with all those wet paintings? You'd have to have like a ledge or a chair rail or something in your studio where you can put them, you know, at least so they dry till the touch anyway. Um, so <laughs> I was, uh, that's another thing I was thinking about. Wouldn't that be kind of fun to do? Uh, so yeah, that's something you want to think about if you are going to do, be doing oils is where you're going to put it to dry. I just set that table easel um, on a ledge so that it can uh, it can dry for a bit. Some people recommend putting a wire on the back. This is a canvas panel, so it doesn't, you can't really put a wire on the back of it. If you were doing a stretch canvas, you could put a couple tacks on the wall and actually just put it up on the wall and let it dry. Um, I probably wouldn't do this on a wall that it was pristine just because, you know, you could get a little paint residue if you paint it all the way around the edge, which is what I typically do when I'm painting on a stretch canvas. Um, so I just based in my peonies with some of that alizarin crimson and a little bit of ultramarine blue to purple it up a little bit. And now I'm going in with whites to drag in some highlights and some more blue to put in some shadows. Because the paint is going to stay wet for me, I can even just go and put shadows leave them, come back to them later and add add more to them. So that's a big advantage to doing oils. Um, but it would be the same technique if you're doing gouache as well, except I'd work on paper rather than like watercolor paper rather than canvas. So you don't have to worry about um, flaking or bonding issues. Gouache bonds much better to watercolor paper or like sketchbook paper. So if you're doing this in your sketchbook, um, I would recommend gouache because oils take a long time to dry and the oil can leach if you haven't gessoed your pages. But you totally can use oils in your sketchbook, just um, just you do an acrylic underpainting or do a gesso underpainting. I love the volume and texture that you can get from oils. And actually, you could do this in acrylics too, but you would probably not want to just sketch in all those flowers first. You'd probably want to do them as you go so that you have that wet paint to blend into. Um, but yeah, it was, it was so much fun. I just really loved it picking up the white and then just kind of like tapping in those petals and then it just automatically pulled in enough color from what I put down there previously, which I just, this is such a satisfying painting to paint. I just really enjoyed it. And in fact, I, like I mentioned before, I've painted this subject before the, from this reference photo and I really felt like like oils was the medium for this. It was so much more intuitive to paint it with oils than watercolor, and I really like the outcome much better. So um, I will, I'll try to remember to link that up so that you can see the combination. I did it on a live stream last year, so, um, so it is a real-time tutorial. And then I think because I wasn't happy with the volume I was getting with the watercolors, I ended up going in with pastels at the end, just because I was like, you know, I'm not feeling it. It just doesn't feel done. I feel like I need more volume. I need more white or solidity or something and uh and so that's you know that's a great way to use mixed media when you're not feeling like you're you're capturing the subject the way you want you know and pastels are so nice to go over watercolors especially when you want those thick punchy uh, passages of color the little peony bud was so fun to paint i just loaded up a flat brush and twirled it to make my circle and i'm using that flat brush to get some um get some leaves in there. Now these flat brushes, these are the Black Swan from Jerry's Artorama. They are a synthetic black squirrel brush. Uh, I love them for oils. They're, um, I also like the, the faux squirrels for watercolors, but these are a little differently. The, the bristles are a little bit brighter. They're shorter and they're a little more stiff, but they're also very, um, very soft compared to the Mimic Hogs, which are the other brushes I were using, which is a synthetic hog brush. So um, if you've been leery to try oils because you don't want to use hog brushes because you don't want to use uh, brushes made from animal fur. Those are made from boar bristles, um, which are a byproduct of the meat industry. So it's not, they're not killing the pigs for the bristles. They're, you know, they're using every part of the animal, I guess, because most of the an animals use for meat. So, if it, you know, everybody has their own uh, criteria for the brushes they use. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to get into that. But the uh, the Mimic Hogs are very good. They do simulate a uh, real hog bristle and they are robust, meaning that um, the reason why I have continued to use hog brushes in my practice is because I would just blow through the synthetic brushes and I'm like, I'm throwing these away so frequently that um, any environmental savings I felt 
by using a synthetic versus a, a animal bristle brush is being negated by the fact that I have to throw these away um, and they're just going in the landfill. So um, so I was really happy to see those come out there. The Mimic Hogs, they're going to cost you about the same as a hog bristle brush because those brushes aren't terribly expensive, but they're robust. They will last if you care for them. And uh, for those details, I recommend the Black Swan brushes here that are also um, vegan and they are just so wonderful for details. Just, you know, take care of them, guys. And the wonderful thing about the Berlin paints being water mixable and water cleanup is that I swish them in water, I wipe off as much paint as I can, don't have to worry about solvents in my trash, and then I wash them with, I actually use lava soap, but brush soap is great. Um, and then they're good as new. And then I let them dry. And actually, I can I can wash them and use them right away with the water mixable oils. If I was going to use them with traditional oils, I'd let them dry all the way and then use them with oils. And you can use the same brushes with your water mixable oils and your regular oils. Um, it's just, they're just slightly, and you can mix water mixable and traditional oils together, but you do lose the uh, water cleanup aspect a bit the more traditional oil you add in. So just kind of things to keep in mind if you're curious about trying them, but worried that you're not going to like them, you can use them with your other oils as well. Um, I've used the Winsor Newton Artisan oils. They were probably the first ones that came out, and I don't like those as well as I like the Berlin uh, oils. And that could just be that I used the Artisans when they first came out and they were brand new and maybe technology has improved, but I really enjoy these Berlins and they are way cheaper than the Windsor Newton. So at least they were the last I checked. I'm doing some final adjustments here where I'm just kind of throwing in some more Lizard and Crimson in the buds. I'm throwing in some deeper shadows in the vase. I just want to make sure it's nice and bright feeling. Um, I want volume in the flowers. I want a brightness in the water. I want a freshness that um, comes from having these looser strokes and these more definite, um, confident brush strokes. Of course, you can work in layers and you can work over weeks on your painting. I'm not going to tell you how to paint. This is how I'm painting and I'm totally enjoying the process. And there you have it. I really like the way this turned out. Um, it was so much fun to paint and I do hope you give something like this a try. You do gouache or acrylics if that's your, if that's your jam or do watercolors, do what you want to do because that's, um, that's what art is all about. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let me know if you'd like to see more oil tutorials, let me know if you'd like to see real-time oil tutorials. Um, they do take a little bit longer usually than watercolor ones, so just let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy crafty, and don't forget to check out our sponsor, jerryzoutorama.com. Bye now!